Yeah, welcome back to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for a conversation uh, surrounding women and politics. And we know that the Nigerian Senate right now, uh, basically, uh, you know, lawmakers in Nigeria are, are starting to have a conversation about having more women representation in parliament, having more women sit. And uh, this conversation actually began in April, April 28th, 2021. And we've invited Evelyn Uwe to discuss this with us. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So first of all, women participation in politics in Nigeria is very low. But I think this, uh, you know, generally stems from a misunderstanding that it's un-African for women to lead. Because when we look at pre-colonial Nigeria, you saw that women dominated politics and military. There was, you know, Queen, Queen Amina of Zaria, Queen Moremi, you know, there were the female Obas in, in Nigeria, you know, females or female Omu ruled alongside the Obi in Onicha. So women were very active in politics in pre-colonial Nigeria, but it has changed, you know, what the current realities are. So why do you think, you know, these changes have been made and how can women begin to retrace our steps back to, you know, equitable political representation in Nigeria? So um, I quite agree. I agree with you. The, if you trace the history of Nigeria, particularly in terms of um, women's participation in governance, in our pre-colonial structures, women were active players in uh, decision making. We had the in the Yoruba land. We had the, the uh, Iyalojas. We mm -hmm. had the the Queen Amina taking. Act, making active, um, playing active role in decision making, but over time, I think I, I can infer that the British colonial systems eroded the role of women of women's participation in decision making. They enforced the what I call the Victorian age style um, in their colonies. And I also, I strongly believe that um, the colonial masters were, were threatened by the resistance the Nigerian women were pulling at that time. We had the Eba women's riot, we had the Aba women's riot mm -hmm. resisting exploitative colonial practices. Over time, women have continually and persistently been excluded from decision making. Since 1999, the statistics of women in politics, particularly in parliament, and from the national to the local level has declined. And then um, Nigerian women are not quiet. Nigerian women are taking active, are making active roles to reclaim their space in decision making. All right. for, for example. Let's go ahead, you know, but I was going to just go quickly mention the bill. The bill that has been uh, pushed forward to amend the 1999 constitution to have um, an extra uh, slot for um, in the Senate um, for a woman that should be set for a woman. So if we have three senators for each state, now it's going to be four and the fourth one is going to be for women. Um, and um, um, uh, some other, you know, uh, alterations. Do you think that might, might be the answer? Or should we just ease off our political process and electoral process to make it more, um, uh, to make it a lot easier for women to participate? Now, there has been a lot of debates around um, the special seat, 101 seats for women in the national parliament, both the Senate and the House of Representatives. For us, we that we feel that's a temporal but not a, sus, a sustainable solution. Yes, there's a 35 percent affirmative action for inclusion of women, which is also standard in other African countries like Kenya, Eritrea, and Uganda. That, 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 that's the standard of practice, which for us is more su sustainable. And then um, we also feel making the electoral systems more inclusive, particularly of, of gender, is also a more sustainable way to go about it. 
For instance, e enforcing that in, um, at the political party level is also a critical issue of contention. Yes, the affirmative, the reserved seat for women is, is good. It's a temporary measure, but women want to see 35% affirmative action affirmative action for women, 35% rep representation of women in decision making, and more of an electoral system that is more inclusive, oh, um, which for us is a more sustainable way to go about yeah, there's also the Rwanda, uh, the Rwandan example. Marginalization. Uh, there's also the Rwandan example. A lot of people have uh, mentioned Rwanda as one of the countries that is leading uh, with regards to uh, female representation in governance and in politics. Um, but I also want you to, you know, speak on the, you know, yes, we're speaking now about 101 extra seats in the Senate and uh, National Assembly and all of that. But, you know, we seem to be ignoring the fact that women can also get involved in other levels of governance. And that is in the local levels, the council levels, uh, the state levels, House of Assembly and, and uh, State House of Assembly and, and the likes. Um, are these also part of the conversation or is it just the National Assembly? Okay, now that, um, that has been the challenge in the past, but... Um, in the, con in the current push for constitution constitutional amendment, women are also pushing for what we call twinning in the constitution amendment, for which is going to cut across both the national up to across the three tiers of government, the national, the state, and the local level. For example, if there's a male president, there should be a female deputy. If there's a male speaker, both at the national and state level, there, there should be a female, a female deputy. That is to say, one sex should not dominate, you know, both positions, both appointive and political positions at the national up to the state and local level. And then um, currently, women are organizing to participate in all the public hearings, both at the zonal and the national level. So we are breaking through, we are organizing, we are pushing forward to ensure that these um, recommendations or this amendment does not just happen at the national level, but right. also trickle down to the other levels of governance, which is the state and the local level. Okay, I think we can uh, wrap it up here. Uh, we wish, of course, there was more time to uh, expantiate on this conversation. But Evelyn, we will we'll definitely be speaking with you again and following up on this bill. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, this is where we wrap up the program on a Tuesday morning. If you missed out on any of the conversations, we spoke about Ned Walker and, of course, women in governance. Uh, join us on our social media platforms. It's pretty simple, at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and same with our YouTube channel. Indeed, I am Annette Felixane. Have a great day. And I am Osao Gi Ogbawa.